So here we are again. I've got the pumping station fixed to the wall and I've got the overflow and filling tank um, connected to the wall. A couple of things just worth noting. Firstly, I realised that the junction box for the pump is on the left hand side of the pumping station. So even though, because all the pipe fittings are on the right hand side, I wanted to get this thing right into the wall, but obviously if I get it right into the wall, I'm not going to be able to reach that box. So I've brought the unit out a little bit from the wall and hopefully that should be enough to comfortably get in there to do electrics. The other thing is, although this is an outside wall, um, my walls inside are covered in plasterboard and they have insulation underneath. So I've been using these little fixings uh, for the plasterboard, which work really, really well. They're pretty solid. Um, and that's what I've used for the tank and for the pumping station. But now that I've put the expansion vessel on its bracket and kind of had a look about where this is gonna go, hopefully you'll see that it's pretty big and obviously it's going to end up being quite full of water potentially so it's going to be a lot of extra weight on the wall so I don't want to use those little fittings for it so what I'm going to do is I'm going to drill um, some proper holes all the way through the insulation into the outside wall using some probably four inch screws just to make sure that gets a proper bite on the bricks um, and not just on the plasterboard. Um, just a quick uh, top tip, although hopefully you already do it. If you have some old towels knocking around, you know, make sure you cover up um, the uh, plumbing stuff with something and the towel works quite well uh, before you start drilling. Um, obviously what you don't want is you don't want dust and stuff falling into valves and pipes and I can't really do it with one hand but you get the idea uh, and also just generally when I'm doing plumbing work when I'm filling stuff up I tend to keep loads of these things um, knocking around very cheap very easy especially if they're old ones that you don't really use um, and then if you get a leak it's much better for it to soak into a towel rather than go through like gaps in floorboards down into uh, the downstairs ceiling or whatever. So make sure you keep all your stuff covered up. Um, you know, pressure relief valves, those kind of things get very, very uh, fussy about pieces of dirt and th that dirt can keep the seat from sitting properly. So I'm gonna do all that. I'm gonna drill some holes and then I'm gonna mount this um, pressure vessel onto the wall. Okay, so here we are with the expansion vessel fitted. You'll probably notice that it was second time lucky. Um, you know, because these are plasterboard covered walls, trying to find good brick anchor behind it can be quite tricky, but got there in the end. Um, and the other thing I've done is I've basically attached this. So in this case, I've got this funny bracket. Um, it's basically designed so that um, we can leave this on, leave this bit on in the bracket, and we can unscrew that nut to take the expansion vessel off and even has a little built-in valve in there so that if there's any pressure in here um, in here um, then that pressure stays in and doesn't doesn't all come out <clears throat> if you don't want it to so that's just a kind of way of being able to to swap those things over without too much hassle and without draining down the system um, the other thing is we've got really two kinds of connections uh, in our solar system so if you remember I said that we need to use compression fittings just because of the temperatures involved so um, obviously compression fitting like that one that we need to use later on um, and the other type are these straight thread connectors that have a fiber washer in the bottom so hopefully let me just get one out of the bag hopefully you know what the fiber washers uh, look like but they're basically usually kind of blue or green things um, and they go in there and the reason they go in there is on the straight threads uh, it obviously doesn't get tighter as you screw it up it will just eventually get to the top so putting that in there is how we make that water tight obviously on the compression fittings and on the taper thread so the back of this is a taper thread and so we put some PTFE on there in this case I'm not too worried because it's the vent pipe so it's not going to have fluid in it normally it shouldn't get too hot um, otherwise again PTFE probably best avoided or certainly don't rely on it because I'm sure it's going to um, on the main uh, main system I'm sure it's going to end up probably melting or something so anyway I put some on the taper thread and the taper thread tightens as it goes in so it ends up kind of being self sealing so the good thing about those is if they start dripping a tiny little bit you just tweak it up slightly and that's okay 
So now this is on here, I need to do my shopping list because as I've learned many times before, I try not to buy too many fittings before I do the job and that's just because you kind of think you know what you're going to do and then when it actually comes to it, you end up putting stuff in different places and what have you. So rather than buying loads of fittings and having to take half of them back, I've kind of left that bit till last. That one there is just a spare um, coupling that I had. So I now need to look at, at basically all of the pipe work all of the way through the system. So here I'm going to have a bit of 22 um, copper. Um, could use plastic, but to be honest, the copper is probably quite helpful. If it does blow any fluid out of that pressure relief valve, it's probably going to be really hot. So the copper will help it to cool down and that'll be like a little radiator to help that happen. Uh, and that pipe will just go along and down into that little um, dump hole in the top of the tank. So that should be fine with a bit of 22. I'm not going to buy a whole length of 22. Hopefully my brother's got a spare bit that I'm going to go and steal off of him. And again, I need to need some kind of elbow in there. Probably a bit too tight to use a pipe bender. Um, so again, any kind of elbow because it's not going to have fluid in it most of the time. You could get away with a, um, a soldered fitting, which is probably what I'm going to use. So that's that bit. At the bottom, I'm going to need to connect this valve here, which is the, the kind of the fill for the tank, back into the fill, the top one of those there. Now, they're three quarter inch pipe threads on both ends. So what I'm probably going to do, it's not quite as neat, but it'd be much easier, is just get a flexi hose for that, three quarter inch flexi hose. Um, and again, it's not going to have fluid in it, or it's, it's not going to have hot fluid in it most of the time. It will all have fluid in it because that's where it comes from. But once those taps are shut off and the system's in use, then that fluid's just going to be room temperature. So again, not too worried there um, about using a flexi hose. Uh, the bottom one is where the fluid comes back. It needs to go back into the tank. So I've got a couple of options there. I'm going to have to think about. I can either put a T into that vent pipe um, on the top and then connect the bottom one of those into the side of the T. Or otherwise, if I um, drill open this hole, I can use kind of a temporary hose, again a flexi hose, just poke it in the top there because it's only in use while we're actually purging the system. So that should be fairly easy. So they're the kind of the smallish bits of pipe. Then if we look back at the main circuit, now up on top um, on the collector, we have uh, in my collector, so check your one, um, I've got two 20 mil, uh, 22 mil coppers coming out the side at right angles to the collector, so going along the roof that way. And so they've provided in this kit two elbows, which will connect straight onto those pipes. Those will then go down towards the roof. And again, they've provided me with uh, these little kind of unions, which are basically 22 there, so they go straight into the compression fitting. And then this fitting on the back is where my flexible stainless steel uh, solar pipe is going to go. So at the top end, because we already said I'm not going to need a bleed valve because I'm going to purge it with a pump, um, that's all I need at the top. Th those two will connect straight onto the flexi pipe and that flexi pipe will come straight down into the airing cupboard here. Um, the flexi pipe will also connect uh, directly onto the top there because again it will use a little nut and a fibre washer, so that should be fine. Coming out the bottom here, I still need to decide what to do because um, I'm going to have my aerator valve, you know, down there somewhere. And so what I'm probably going to do is use a little L bracket, kind of a miniature version of one of those, just a standard um, kind of thing like you have in your cupboard. Probably um, used to basically hold the weight of that somewhere up on the wall. Um, and then I need to work out how to get from there into the valve. And again, 22 mil is a bit of a waste really because um, the rest of the system is basically 15 and the coil in the cylinder is only 15. So what I might look at doing is getting some three quarter to 15 mil copper adapters. Normally the 15s go to half inch pipe, but you can get um, three quarter to 15s. think they're a bit more money, but then I can just use 15 mil pipe into that and same in here we've got female pipe threads so we need male bsp three quarter inch to 15 mil copper same out the end of that um and then again i'm going to need to do some copper um 15 down into here down into the cylinder um, and at the top i'm then going to have my um anti-siphon valve which is just compression i've already got that um 
and then out the other end of the anti-siphon valve a bit of short bit of 15 mil which I'll then need to somehow turn back into um, this uh, three quarter inch nut that goes on the end of the flexi pipe and that will be for the flow um, uh, I'll probably be able to get an adapter again probably just um, three quarter inch pipe to 15 mil um, adapter and then that should be fine and then the only other thing I need to think about is a drain valve um, as I realized when I put in the cylinder in the first place um, I fitted the pipe and where the um, the cold feed comes into the bottom of here um, wherever that is down the bottom there I forgot to put a drain valve on it so if I ever have to take this cylinder out um, I'm gonna have a fun job there so I'm probably gonna go with um, like I say some kind of mechanical drain if I can find one with a cap on the end of it so it can be watertight um, most of the time that's fine and then two more things to think about um, as you see I use a lot of pipe insulation it just makes sense because it's cheap and it keeps the heat in but you cannot use this normal pipe insulation on solar pipes because its temperature rating is not high enough and if you do it all will happen it, was a, it will fall to pieces over time disintegrate and fall off um, I'm sure it won't catch fire I'm pretty sure it doesn't get that hot but you can buy high temperature insulation and, and I already have some downstairs in my solar collector boxes which I'm going to use so high temperature insulation is kind of a must for the kinds of volumes that we're talking about here the twin pipes going up to the ceiling uh, are already insulated so I'm just going to need a little bit of 50mm high temperature insulation just for this section down here um, and the other thing is just be a bit careful on clips so again I tend to use these talon clips I like them they're really solid and pretty reasonably priced and I've got loads of them um, downstairs in a bag but the problem is again is they're kind of designed for hot water system temperatures not for the kind of 150 180 degrees that some of these other things are rated at so I'm probably going to look to get a few metal 15 mil clips instead of the plastic ones and again just to make sure that it all stays sturdy uh, and doesn't melt doesn't go soft um, when I connect it all up so I'm going to do that now. I'm going to find out if my brother's got a bit of spare 22. Um, don't forget to check things like, um, I got the cylinder and it has these 15 mil compressions on, but I need to make sure that those compressions have olives in, silly things like that, which uh, are a real pain when you come back from the shop and realize that you're missing a 15 mil olive and you hunt around the entire house to find one, all the rest of it. So just take in stuff like that, draw it out on a little piece of paper just to make sure you've covered everything. Um, and then I'm gonna go off to the shop and hopefully only have to go once to bring back all of the things I need to get all of this plumbing ready to go.